This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 709. Tuesdays, we've been talking about professionalized wrestling here in Sorgatron Media in Pittsburgh, PA. But I got everybody on the line with me this week. A little lighter show, just kind of stretching our legs a little bit after WrestleMania. Uh, there's a lot of room to stretch your legs. Uh, but anyways, with me on the line, first of all, from deepest, darkest beacon, New York, is Mad Mike. Sorg. Mm-hmm. I want to say that 25 years ago, one of the most important contributions of my life came out. And for those of you who have seen it, you know exactly what I'm speaking of. For those of you who haven't seen it, I highly recommend, as soon as this podcast is over, treat your damn self. It's only 86 minutes. And watch a goofy movie. There you go. The power yeah. line. Power, power line. line. Yeah. You wanna know you wanna know why you should watch it hmm. if you like this show? Hmm. Xavier Woods, Alexa Bliss, they fucking love it. Okay. They fucking love it. There are videos out there of them talking about this movie. So you need to watch it. But don't listen to Zack Ryder because he's a fake fucking Disney fan. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned so much. Also with us, Ronnie Starks. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Watch a goofy movie after the show's over. <laughs> I, don't I need you all to stand out above the crowd. I don't think that's how you wear a, l- a lucha mask, but yeah, I didn't want to put it on the whole way. It's okay. not not how you wear a lucha mask. That's it, true. You guys oh. see my tassels? Yeah. <laughs> I have some tassels. Full on tassel mode. Uh, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. <laughs> you can find links to this in past episode and other shows that we do. Like we get together with Matt, Mike and I and just kind of catch up on things on the May- Monday Mayhem uh wrestling wrap up as well as indie mayhem we had uh we had a great uh round table ronnie was a part of that justin idol uh the beast man took us for a walk and uh oh who tyler Klein was a part of that as well and we'll be talking with magnum ck about his new uh magnum opus uh documentary coming out this week that'll be coming up in uh, in your feeds as well uh you can drop us a line at that email address Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. And, of course, uh, you can check out our uh, supporters uh, uh, over at the 405media.com. Still supporting the show. Thank you. Uh, also still supporting the show on Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Our friends at the fan of the show level. Bo Diggity! Woo! As well as Ed Burke, Bobby F, J Town, Team Hammer Fist, our friends down in Florida. Uh, and also at the Poppy Club level, Bradley, Brothers, Dave Potter, Daniel Towery, and Tina Keys. And at the Pizza Club is Doc Remedy and Kyle Turner. And at the manager, $20 level is OccupyProWrestling.com and Farnsworth Investments. And Matt Mike, you're still listed there, actually. Um, that's because I forgot when April 1st was. Thank you for the extra month of contributions, man. Like, yes. Uh, so thank you. We did, we did Patreon in the bank on the last day of the month. We did. We did. And it, it threw it because by the time we were done with the show, I was already charged for April. <laughs> <laughs> that's you, wow. All really accurate. Wow. That's, that's. That's an interesting that it was not by design. I can tell you that (laughs) because I don't know when I don't know when Patreon does their stuff. So Uh, anyways, uh, so thank you, everybody. You you two can support the show if you like what's going on here and help us keep the lights on. And and thank you, everybody that does still contribute. You know, I know I know a lot of people kind of dropping off of Patreons all over the place because of everything going on. And it's really appreciated uh, that you guys are still sticking with us and being a part of the mayhem. Also a part of our mayhem live on our Facebook right now. And we're on a few other 
uh, formats as well. I'm keeping an eye on the chat. If anybody's chatting with us over on the Mayhem Show Periscope too, I actually I, I have this nice um, look at how tiny that is. It feels it feels like a baby phone in my hand. It's an I, iPhone four playing the uh, Periscope feed, so I can keep an eye on the chat. I know. By the way, this is my 8s <laughs> plus, and uh, yeah, yeah. Wow, this is what we used to do, guys. It's wow, dude. It's a baby phone. Uh, anyways, so uh, so we, we, WrestleMania. Yeah, WrestleMania. That's how I'm starting this show. WrestleMania happened. I tr- we tried to refrain a little bit from talking about it last night. We wanted to keep more kind of current with Raw, and that was tough. Uh, but uh, Ra- Raw did not give us a lot. Of stuff. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, the obvious star of the show was the Boneyard. Mm-hmm. Uh, incorrect. No. Firefly Funhouse. Oh, I'm gonna say I liked boneyard i need to watch them both without the chat commentary that we had going on <laughs> because I, we were we had google hang out with everybody and i want and, and in both instances i took my headphones off and just heard yelling around my neck uh as people were mm-hmm. reacting to things but i didn't want anything spoiled there was a lot of talking in 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 those those uh segments so um <laughs> it's debatable um but uh but anyways so 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 I, I'm going Boneyard, and I'm going to say pending rewatch. Is that okay, Mike? Sure. Um, sorry, sorry. Even even if you just said Boneyard outright, I'm not going to argue with you. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just saying. For me, it was Firefly Funhouse. Ronnie, where are you in, in this uh, uh, heated debate that's not happening? Uh, I am more on the Firefly Funhouse. Really? Firefly okay. Funhouse. Okay. Uh, I popped really hard on Sunday. Okay. <laughs> okay. It was fantastic. I scared my fiance. He, like, <laughs> he, had, he had no idea what was going on. Yeah, yeah, that was so. A lot it, of explanation needed to be happened with Firefly Funhouse. So, so uh, Boneyard first. So that was our first kind of glimpse that oh god, this is going to be different. Um, mm-hmm. It was about a half an hour. Yep. And and there was a uh, Garrick.net had a, a a great post that Mainstream Matt uh, shared in their uh, our group our uh, wrestling mayhem show Facebook group that it was like an eight hour shoot mm-hmm. to I conduct can, that thing. I can see that. It's it looked yeah, it looks right. Like so I, I like this part. The the people they got to build the set since it was was a, a team of workers that were gonna be off for the entire month. So WWE paid for their month. Good. For them to go do that set. That's great. That's awesome. Good. Yeah, like all right, we give WWE a lot of shit and mm. and there's a Massive debate as to WrestleMania as to whether WrestleMania should have happened or not. Yes, but they're doing right by the performers. I think uh, and, and, performers and the people making it happen. And that's the thing. I mean, we can debate up and down, and I think we have to a certain point about whether WrestleMania should have happened. WWE doing the right thing here. Um, but but let's just talk about what did happen, and mm-hmm. let's let's put aside the fact that this is definitely like oh this is weird oh this is not WrestleMania to us, but it's still this is this is a show that happened to be called WrestleMania that we all watched because <laughs> it's going to be the biggest show. Um, it was WrestleMania ish. It was yeah oh yeah oh yeah it was it was it was it was a semblance of Mania ishness. Um, so, so how did we feel? And again, we had kind of live chat for, for most of the time. So, so we had people to talk to, but like, did you feel other than the obvious grandness of it? Did you feel lessened in these matches with a lack of audience? Mm. I, I think the matches that fell flat for me would have also fallen flat in front of 80,000 people. Yes. I, I think the I think the ones that had good stories going in, for the most part, played out how they would have in front of eighty thousand. I feel bad for some of the performers that got short change of reactions for for big moments. Like um, for Otis, I I imagine that reaction in front of a crowd, obviously Drew McIntyre, mm-hmm. that reaction in front of the crowd would have been great. Um, Roman Braun, whoever would have shown up in front of eighty thousand, that reaction would have been great too. Mm-hmm. Um, but but if you look at matches like Owens and Rollins, I think that almost played better without a crowd mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because they they're able to take advantage of stuff like the Last Man Standing match. They're able to take advantage of an empty arena. Mm-hmm. Like 
that match. Oh, not an empty arena, an empty performance center. Well, yeah. Which added a whole other thing to it. Yeah. But, like, I, I think certain matches that took advantage of that shined. Like, mm-hmm. the ladder match? Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, for the situation those guys were put into, damn. Above for, and beyond. For, for having, like, okay, this tag team match is now just a three-way, sing, like, single three-way match for the tag belts, oddly. Um, with little explanation, I believe. To be fair, tag team ladder matches don't involve tagging your partner anyway. True, true, true. Uh, multi man, you know, whatever. But no, that was yeah. good. It was a great finish. It was um with them pulling the belts off the the belts off of the 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 hoarder. Um, yeah. like that that was good. And and I would hope you know, and I don't know if we would have gotten the same thing even with the tag with um, with, with double the people in it. No, probably not. Mm-hmm. You might not have even. I don't even know if you would have gotten a lot of the same results. No, no. It, yeah, yeah. It does feel like that. I feel like there's certain things they held on to because you're like, this isn't happening in the crowd. We're not going to do this here. Yeah, because uh, Sasha turning on Bailey, that needs a crowd. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That needs a crowd. Mm-hmm. Ronnie, how how did you feel reaction wise, especially as somebody who um, often feeds off the uh, hate and despicability um, of 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 the audience yourself? Um, you know, the show wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I, I think. The crowd is what makes wrestling what it is. Like it just there are a lot of things were like hit or miss silent wise. Mm-hmm. But like I like the fact that everybody was working stiffer and everything had more of a realistic kind of feel to it. But you know, it was it was kind of WrestleMania, I guess. Mm-hmm. It was weird. I felt like I was just watching a wrestling show. I was like, okay. Who had who started with a slap fight? Was that Daniel did Brown Bryan have something on there? Yeah, with 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 Sammy, is that what I'm thinking? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. stuff like that. They got also, they got, um, Rhea and Charlotte beat the crap out of each other. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. There was definitely stuff that they it benefited from. You can hear this through an empty building, mm-hmm. right? Like they used sound to a really good ability. Mm-hmm. So, it, I heard some people say it was too much grunting and screaming. But I'm mm-hmm. like. I'm like, a lot of those people that performed last night, like, you could tell the people who had become a little used to performing in the empty performance center and the people who were doing it the first time. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like, Charlotte, Rhea, Edge, Randy, um, even, like, Braun to an extent. Like, a lot of those guys that were really, like, uh, uh, like, a lot of loud, loud grunts. That was their first time working in empty arena, so they may have thought they had to project a little bit more. When mm-hmm. you know, sometimes less is more with that. But yeah, yeah. but like Oscar, Oscar was perfectly comfortable, like doing what she needed to do in that. Partners bringing up the smack talking was fun since you could hear literally all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, was it? Oh God, who said it? Someone said that Kofi got flattened like a pancake. Like during the ladder match, I, I think it was uh, uh, Jimmy Uso that said it. Like when Kofi ate a ladder, he's like, Boy, you just got flattened like a pancake. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was waiting for, especially in that environment, I felt like this happened on SmackDown a couple weeks ago about the maybe the wrestlers would actually respond to the commentary because you can definitely hear it from where you're at. Oh, some of them did. Yeah. Some of them did. Like, God, who was someone turned over and said, Oh, you like that, Michael Cole? Mm-hmm. I forget mm-hmm. who it was. I want to say maybe Sammy. It sounds like something Sammy would do. Mm-hmm. I, I want to say it was Sammy, or it might have even been Dolph. I think it was Kevin Owens. No, because Michael Cole wasn't calling that match. Mm-hmm. I remember specifically they were calling out Cole. Mm. But yeah, like some of, some of them did do that because, especially if you listen to the replays, you can hear the commentary. If the commentary was speaking during it. Mm-hmm. That, that that blew my hair back. That is wild. It does that thing that I, I've had this with editing too, because we used to Black Diamond would have you know this Ronnie. The commentary would be like right behind where I was shooting ringside, and that's the mic that I use when I'm editing is, is that ringside camera. So we get that little bit of an echo thing going on there, um, and it was hard to kind of separate things if I did need to kind of edit the cover something up or something. Right, like you still would hear Ronnie at the table behind me. You you completely hear him. 
um, which was great for syncing, by the way. But uh, beyond that, it, it becomes a little difficult. So, yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, it's the empty arena problem, but it's also the uh, poorly attended indie show problem, too, isn't it? <laughs> so, it's like you've been you've been at those shows. We're like, I can I can hear the commentary really good from the front okay. row. Uh, Dave, okay. Dave's right. It was Bailey. What's that? Bailey was doing it. What, was yell, it? yelling at um, Cole? Yeah. Okay. It was Bailey. That's one where there was so, so much grunting coming from my headphones from somebody else's TV. <laughs> it's just like, what? This could be anything. And um, apparently there's a problem with Rhea's visa. So that might... <gasps> no. That might it expired. How, did they, how does that happen? Don't people just take care of that for them? No. No, you have to do it yourself. Oh. I thought WWE took care of that kind of stuff. I thought WWE like makes your no, your, your they, shit they, straight. They take care. Um, like they will help you get from country to country, but if you're on a working visa, mm -hmm. you have to take care of that yourself because that requires like an in-person visit or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in the current climate, maybe she just didn't have a chance. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. Uh, you can't really just pop back home to do it now, right? No, that that happened with like Wade Barrett mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. a time. Seamus, I think too. Mm -hmm. It pops yeah. up. This, this, this is this is this is a problem that happens. Uh, they have, yeah, visas and green cards and things like that. Um, I mean, they're a little more difficult than you know. And when you're on the road all the time, it has to be a little hard to keep up on things like that. Well, oh, I didn't yeah. get the modus in my mailbox. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, either way. Um, let's see. Again, go back to it. A Boneyard Master, starting with that. Um, um, I, I love the pure biker taker of it. I am a little sad we didn't get the, like, cane run in, Holy Trinity thing. Um, but we got Pyro. We mm -hmm. got controlled Undertaker fire, and we that was amazing. We got teleporting. Uh, we we had an army of nameless goons. Yeah, yeah. What? What? How did AJ get some druids? I yeah. It had to have been a lot of development guys, just just in druid costumes. Oh, I, I oh, assume yeah. it was everyone that was in the twenty four seven championship segment. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah, in the twenty the the twenty four seven segment was the biggest collection of who is that. Oh yeah. no, those, yeah. those were extras. I didn't even recognize those guys. Like it, it's got to be the lower performance center NXT those, guys, those, right? Those, no, I I I know what some of those people look like. I didn't even recognize those. people. Really? Yeah. I like, just it, they, they it, were they were rosebud level. Yeah, that's what that's what I was my thought. I'm just like, who let the rosebuds out after the uh, the twenty four seven rosebuds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, Boneyard was fun. Uh, they, they they went a lot of ways with it, and and you're just kind of like, whoa. Like, also, we didn't know how it was going to end. Nobody explained that this like throwing them like, like I it was. I, I assumed it was like a casket match or a buried alive match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of assumed it was something like that. I love that there was music. There was no commentary. We just mm -hmm. went full cinematic on this thing, and just no excuses. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, speaking of like the music and the score and stuff like that, um, friend of the show, Mike Quackenbush, was actually asking about it this weekend, and I got into a little tete a tete with him. Oh yes, we're, we're, yeah. we're we having a good, good good conversations with the Quack. Yeah, yeah, just just like about the stuff we've been talking about, like like because he he initially asked if um if the Boneyard I'm gonna read his thing, his tweet verbatim if the Boneyard match is the ultimate is example of the ultimate realization of sports entertainment as a separate concept from pro wrestling. And it kind of is, but I think they could even go further with it. Like, and not even, not even like Firefly Funhouse further. I think they can go further with it. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like I saw someone on Twitter was watching WrestleMania with a, um, a YouTube feed going of canned audience reactions. And it made a difference. Hmm. It was really fascinating. And I'm like, you can do that with like a boneyard match, like because I, I personally I want to see like Brock Lesnar have one of these kinds of matches, and like just set him in like, <laughs> like no like legit set him in like gladiatorial combat, like Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg one last time like in a fucking gladiator arena, where you have like extras in the crowd like doing thumbs up thumbs down shit like that like. 
<laughs> that would be awesome. Let's do the, the half thumbs up. Yeah, exactly. Time to die. But yeah, like I, I think you can take stuff like that further. And it's not something that you should do all the time. Mm-hmm. Like maybe in the current climate you could, but it's stuff that should be held out for bigger occasions. Yeah, and you wonder what you wonder if there there would be any room for them to kind of conceptually take this further as extra stuff for the network or or, or something like that. I mean, and, and this isn't like brand new. We did do some final deletion stuff with the Hardys at mm-hmm. a time or, or another. So I but think yeah, it, it was also treated differently. Oh, absolutely. The final, the final deletion stuff was looked at. Like as oh haha that's cute that's weird what is that yeah, yeah. whereas whereas when we come back to Titus O'Neil's face from the Firefly Funhouse Titus is fucked up mm-hmm. like like honestly as as good as a moment as it was for Drew Firefly Funhouse should have ended WrestleMania ah uh, yeah 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 other than it, it, it's it's the hero didn't win I, I agree with. You. Um, because that's that's well, a, yeah, it depends on who you think the hero was. <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. Because I'm with you. No, I get you. I got you. Like John Cena was played as the heel mm-hmm. in that in that little match. Well, you can I, also I, argue that this is also a warped perspective of John Cena through the eyes of Bray Wyatt as a character too, it? in the eyes of everybody, not just Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but is it? No, I, I'm legit asking because, like, they they just point out stuff that happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> they just point out stuff that happened. It's not like it's not like Dre was changing the course of events. No. Everything that happened. happened in real life is what happened in that whole thing. Yep. And it's you know when they show the fist, I was like, all right, something fun's gonna happen. And then Cena comes out in his first outfit, and I'm like, "Oh, for God's sake!" <laughs> and it just it just went from one extreme to another. The NWO Cena was probably my favorite part of the whole segment. Like, what if Cena actually would have had a real heel turn? Mm-hmm. But he never would. I think we just saw it. Do you think that's what it was? And, and I think they're saying that it would not have gone well. Mm. Yeah. Like it would have been great in the short term, but it would not have worked out in the long term. It would yeah. have been like the Stone Cold heel turn. But that worked though. Did it? So that, did that, it? That did work. They just didn't have anyone to be the top face. Mm. Yeah. He didn't have a rock to play off of. Exactly. Like I believe what he was feeling with uh Jericho and Benoit, if I if I'm not mistaken. Uh Jericho and Benoit and Angle was in there too. Yeah, yeah. And they just weren't like they were good, but not great. Right. Yeah. So or at least not as great. Yeah, as like, like if Triple H was around then or the Undertaker. Mm-hmm. That probably would have worked a lot better, but I think they were both injured at the time. Wait, you're talking about Stone Cold? Yeah. Uh, the, he was teaming with Triple H until Triple H got injured. Yes, yes, and I think that was supposed to, like the two-man power trip was eventually supposed to break up and Triple H was supposed to be the face. Oh, okay. That would make sense. But you that had to go sense. into a squad. I, it was such a weird because there, there's probably so many plans that were that were in place, and then you know between injuries and WCW uh, uh, purchasing and trying to integrate happened. It just you know any good plans got washed out. Yeah, for what we got. So, which ideally on paper should have been a better plan, but of course things happen. Things happen and how they happen. So either way, um, a fun theatrical. Situation with Raw, uh, I'm sorry, with WrestleMania, Wrestle Raw. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about those matches and and some of my like. I, I'm just like, I just feel like I'm I'm watching a really good recent SmackDown for some reason, uh, with some of my thoughts. But we'll get to that in a second. But first, please go check out Indie Wrestling US, Indie Wrestling Network, Indie Wrestling Network over there. A lot of great stuff going on. Uh, a lot of releases, of course. Last week rolled out the uh, 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 Tops Prospect uh, featuring John. Rode in his ride to the, rise to the championship there with uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling, the Tour of Italy, Mambo Italiano. You know, as seen on TV, excuse me, as seen on every damn wrestling program on your TV, Mambo Italiano, uh, including the uh, great uh, Pasta Death Matches, part of that release, all on the Indie Wrestling Network and VOD and DVD. And uh, also, just rolled out over the weekend is Made in the 216, Shane Taylor. 
uh, volumes one and two. Um, some good stuff in there. Him taking on uh, our friends G Raver, uh, Jack Pollock, uh, uh, a great ten man tag uh, that that has him teaming with like the Chris Brothers, Ray Rowe, and uh, Shima Zion's in there. I think he's teaming with, teaming with Elias. Uh, it's an insane ten man tag. I think we talked about it a little bit last week with Justin Idol, who was also in that match. Ray Collection again, that also on DVD, VOD, and the Indie Wrestling Network. It also just rolled out today. The refs with Rigatoni episode three. So go catch up there. A lot of talk about deathmatch wrestling. That if you're interested in that, because uh, our, our friend George Ross uh, on that show is a. Uh, uh, very, very attracted to deathmatch wrestling. <laughs> so, um, and he's even ladies. He's showing his scars. So, um, that tells a girlfriend. Uh, but anyways, uh, go check that out. Indie Wrestling dot network. That's an exclusive with Rest with Rigatoni. Of course, Rise with a Nerd with Lewis the Nerd. Uh, also an exclusive over there on the network. And we got plenty of more content rolling out, rolling out over the next several weeks. So stick with it at Indie Wrestling dot us. We're going to help you, help you with your wrestling fix. Uh, during this uh, quarantine life uh, that's going on now. So anyways, yeah, there was a moment, Mike, and I think it was mostly the first night, definitely mm-hmm. a little bit of the second night, where we are just like, yeah, this is um really good SmackDown or Raw. A little a little bit. I, I, I thought the first night was better than the second night. Mm, yes. I yeah. Think- I, yes, I think more happened, more interesting happened. I, I think we also felt deflated by the women's, uh, how some of the women's matches turned out a little bit. Um, Rhea Ripley really deflated me on that, too. But obviously... If, if there's problems with her visa, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. But also, maybe it'd be a bigger deal if it was Rhea Ripley keeping the belt in front of 60,000 fans. Right? I yep. mean, like I'm with you. It just like This feels like this would have been different if, if things didn't change. That so. just means she has to chase the title now. Yeah. When the visa gets worked out. Not a problem with that. Rhea, Rhea, Rhea building up and overcoming Charlotte eventually is great. If Charlotte's even the champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we, have a, we have a very big six-way ladder match tomorrow. Night. It's Charlotte versus Io Shirai. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving Charlotte a chance in hell. Yeah. I mean, let's... Let's be honest. Io, Io, Io Shirai is, is going to literally do moonsaults around her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that'll be good. I I'm not caught up on the NXT yet, and and I need to watch the last week before we get to uh, tomorrow night's action. I, I'm probably end up going to watch AEW to be completely honest. Mm. Um, just that, that's just where yeah. I'm at. When by the time I get by the time I get, I, I, I'm done with my productions at, at 9 o'clock. I'm just like, I can I can handle AEW the way they've been presenting things. I can't muscle through even NXT right now. It's Is just, that the start of the uh, the TV tournament? TV championship? Yeah, the TV tournament. Yeah, which I'm good with. I'm good with. I, I just, something about it. I, I'm, I, in today's climate and circumstances, AEW is more digestible for me mm-hmm. between the two. And that's even NXT right now. I, uh, you know what, you know it does help AEW a whole hell of a lot. No Jim Ross. Uh okay. No All right. Jim Ross on commentary. That helps. That you. helps me. That helps me a great deal. That helps you, but Jim Ross doesn't bother me. That um, I'm, he, I'm, should. he should. He should. No, 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 no. But Lawler bothers me. That's Lawler's yeah. terrible. They're Jim the Ross, same person. Jim Ross they're, they're is the same person. The Jim Ross is the is the is the the uncle at the dinner table that might be losing a little bit, but we're just helping him along, and we're happy he's there because we respect I'm that he was happy. in the Korean War. No, I'm not happy he's there anymore. <laughs> well, if we just have I, that, that's when I take my food and I go sit inside and watch the football game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If we just had Mike today and Excalibur, we'd be fine. Oh, absolutely. You mean Tony Schiavone? Yeah, why did I say... Sorry. You said, you said Mike, Mike Schiavone, Tanae. gotcha. Mike Schiavone, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Tony Tanay, right, Tony, right. Tony, Tony Tanay. Uh, all good. All, 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 all good combinations, by the way. I miss Excalibur, yeah. uh, for sure. Yeah. I but miss Excalibur. I don't miss JR. I, I love, I, I love Tony and, and Cody calling for the night, you know? Yeah. Oh, Cody knows what to put over. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, oh, I, I, I the, 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 best, the, the best part is when Cody, they're talking about something and Cody's like, I picked that material over on the, uh, on, on the uh, guardrails over there. <laughs> yeah. Like stuff like that. Uh, Cody, Cody, Cody. Hi. Hi. I know, I know you listen. It's Mad Mike here. Um, if not, I'm going to text this to you later. Cause you dropped out your phone number for God knows what reasons. Whoop. Um, don't call your championship belt big platinum. Big platinum. That's what he listen. Listen to the commentary. Oh, I didn't catch that. At least it didn't stick it with me because it's just like, huh? Yeah, that and see, that's why Jr. doesn't bother you because you don't really listen to commentary. So not, not, not with the scrutiny you do for sure. Yes. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm just not. I'm not on that level. I'm just like. So, it, it is it is the the dash of pepper on the match and and that's it for me. Yeah, don't call your championship belt big platinum. Mm-hmm. That just that makes it sound lesser than. But also also uh, also Mike, I'm used to I'm used to having to muscle through really bad indie commentary. And that's no disrespect for that. that is that is no disrespect to anybody that I think I work on a regular basis with. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Ronnie, you've been coming right? Except for Ronnie. Oh, yeah, it's garbage. No, my, except my for Ronnie. Garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, dude, I some of that BDW commentary has been. Uh, <laughs> oof. I'm trying to be nice and I'm trying to pick my words, but Ronnie, I can't do it. Ronnie, can you do it for me? Uh, I'm garbage at color commentary. There you go. There's I think that. I just I shit on everything. Well, you're, you're fine. You're not horrible. <laughs> but when you don't care, you really but, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part of the podcast where it becomes a performance review. My, uh, <laughs> my favorite things I don't care about is like just some of the people that I just can't stand. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not yeah, 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 yeah. But we can, you, like, you, can you, you can tell if you listen to the last Black Diamond Wrestling shows over on Indie Wrestling Not Network. You got time. We'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad that I start crying laughing at one point. And then uh Joey just doesn't help either. And, <laughs> and we're- jo- Joey Joey uh oh I keep messing up his name because it's so close to somebody else. Sincere Salvatore Sincere Not Salvatore Sincere, Sincere that you know from the WWF in the nineties. But yeah. <laughs> Something. Just call him Salvatore Sincere. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But he and I will just constantly shit on everything and we won't care. Mm-hmm. And it, it's bad. Ronnie, yeah. that's not. Uh, now, Grant, I've never done commentary before except one time with Michael Cole where I was god awful. <laughs> that was at WWE Access that wasn't on the job. Yes. yes it, it was at WWE Access. It, and I was terrible. I kept saying the word amazing, even though, to be fair, I was talking about TLC too. Anyway, um, <laughs> shitting on the product. Not, not not the best move. Yeah, not shitting I on mean, the product, shitting on the worker. Did you? <laughs> That's even worse. I mean, did you, have you seen NXT season four? Have you seen NXT season one? <laughs> well, yeah, okay, but it got real uh, bad. It got real bad. No, towards no, the no, season you're thinking of is season three with the women. Mm. That's when it got real terrible. When he had it gone, yeah, no, yeah, no. they had it oh, gone. the gone, yeah, and there was Caitlyn and AJ and. Mm-hmm. Actually, a lot of them stuck around. Yeah, a lot, a lot of them stuck around oh, and got really good. But around. yeah, yeah. But we can say that that entire like NXT original game show run. You know, there's a lot of good talent. Thinking it was tough enough. God, you know, I, mean, I was looking at some old. Uh, uh, you know, I'll get the pig boy. What? I'll get the pig boy. I'll get the pig boy. Yeah. On NXT season one. Yeah, yeah. Three. By the way. Oh, um, so do we begin the countdown to when Heath Slater becomes a world champion now? He needs a beard. Is that uh, when it starts? That was a determination. He needs a beard. When you well, start seeing him growing out that beard, first. what's that? He needs to get even more Jack. He needs to get fired. And then he needs five years on the Indies. And he, then yes. Come back. He needs to get okay, fired, so, become right. an Impact Wrestling champion, and see you next WrestleMania. Yeah. Well, not necessarily Impact. We need him to become a world champion in a different promotion. The Ring of Honor needs a good champion nowadays. I'm sure Rise wouldn't mind having him. Yeah. <laughs> Rise with a Y, not the women's promotion. I mean, Heath, but yeah. But I'm sure the I promotion would like him too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, baby. do you want to go underground for Heath Slater? Do you, uh, do you want me to tweet him? Like, you want to go underground? Heath, Heath Slater and Lucha Underground. <laughs> <laughs> We're thinking a different one here locally, Mike, but. <laughs> 
I'll tweet him right now. I'm like, you ready to go underground, pal? We can save your career. Think about it, man. <laughs> Uh, you like kids. Guess what? We like kids, and that's why Ronnie doesn't get access to promotion uh, twitters. Um, no. <laughs> uh, but no, seriously. Um, but, you know, but it has to happen. I love even in the Chronicle. In the Chronicle, they they show uh 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 gender coming over and hanging out because they, they've been buddies and you know down the street from each other or whatever this whole time, and uh, and 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 just like. Oh yeah, maybe we'll have to do a super three MB twenty twenty five reunion, and I'm just like, well, where's Heath? Where nobody's talking about Heath? It, it's such a weird thing because Heath is the one that's been employed this whole time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gotten not gotten let go for underperforming, and is and then everybody else gets the belt. <laughs> so it's just like it's such a weird, it's a weird world in wrestling how that yeah. works out. I don't know. That Chronicle was very good with uh, Drew, though. It is the first, like I said last night, probably the first of many we're going to see of um, going into, because how many documentaries were in the works right now? um, And how many of them are getting wrapped up over Skype? (laughs) So, you know, uh, so they'll they'll be interesting to see that. There's going to be a lot of kind of reactionary content from uh, uh, how this WrestleMania sorted out uh, one way or another. It's going to, man, this this is a big mark. You know, it, it's, this is this is gonna be a weird month in wrestling. Oh, yeah. in general, and maybe even longer. Who knows? Uh, I know, I know, but be ready for it. Be ready for it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I... Are you ready? Are you ready for a good time? Good time. Yes, yes, yes. So even, even, yes, right. Bobby's saying even he's gonna grow a beard and win the championship one day. One day, because he's got kids. Someday. Someday. All right, guys. Well, hey, I want to give a shout out to producer Missy, who's looking at me right now. Missy, hello. Hello. I don't know. She, I was about to. I was about to throw to an ad, but hello. Okay. She she was coming over here to tell me to throw to the ad. Got it. Um, put that down. Put that down. That's threatening. Put that down. Uh, <laughs> so out to our friends, Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcast. We get the perfect pepperoni pizza for, for location. Pickup. What for pickup. for pickup? Yes, for pickup or delivery. <gasps> uh, for pickup or delivery. Um, so so go check them out. They've been really supporting us here in our time. Oh no, she's. I stop poking me. I did. Yeah, no. Is using a producer no. voice? My favorite sword. Put the stick down. Okay, okay. Put the kabuki stick away. I'm, I'm, I'm giving the ad. I'm giving the ad. A support and slice on Broadway. Thank you for feeding our podcast for uh, nearly ten years here on the Sogertron Media Network. Here on Tuesdays, uh, go check them out. Sliceonbroadway.com. All right, guys. We will be back after this message. And who are we gonna? Who are you going to listen to? Are you listening back to the show, you live people? You know what you're missing? Classic Linus. Oh, God, I'm going to stick to the face. What is, wait, What the heck? I'm going to point an eye out, kid. Uh, but uh, go, go. We'll be back with a big question after this before I get hurt. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hi, this is Kevin Eastman, co-creator of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you're listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show! We are back, and we're as happy as that cat looking at Drew McIntyre's new championship. He's so happy. He's you. so happy. Human, did you win that? <laughs> yes. Yes. Also happy with the big question is Mad Mike. All right, guys, uh, we've been talking a lot about the Firefly Funhouse, uh, the Boneyard match, all things that we loved about WrestleMania. My big question is, if you could either pick a WrestleMania feud from the past, has to be WrestleMania, or project one for WrestleMania Goes Hollywood next year, Mm. what feud would you like to see done in a cinematic style? <laughs> oh! Like the Boneyard match and the Firefly Funhouse match. <laughs> we'll do it. Oh my. And honestly, oh. we should probably do this exact big question next year before we start Mayhem Mania, too. Mm. I, think mm. we, I think this one deserves to be answered more than once. I have a non WWE one I want to see. 
Nope, nope, doesn't count. But has to I, I want to give that as a as a secondary answer after the big question, if that's okay. 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 So if you could hear me out on that. Yeah. But for WrestleMania, um, mm-hmm. your past WrestleMania, if you half, half for- answer, I would like to see a remaster of Roddy Rod- Rowdy Roddy Piper versus uh, Gold Dust. Oh, Back yeah. up, uh, I mean, I like- obviously not realistic considering Roddy and. Well, actually, yeah, both of their positions, I guess, right now. But um, but I mean, this is this is fantasy booking. This is fantasy booking. We can do it in CG. Yeah, we absolutely. We can. just you can just go ahead and do that. Like do a camp WWE style. Well, actually, in <laughs> for this idea. Um, <laughs> um, I that's not my real answer though. That's just kind of a fan my fantasy one. Uh, Ronnie, do you have one? Cool. Tough question. Mm. <laughs> I always feel for the good ones. This one's so good, I don't even have an answer for myself yet. Uh, let, let me roll back. Let me roll back. I'll give you some time there, Ronnie. How about the New Day versus the... Actually, how about the New Day versus the Usos versus Miz and Morrison? Hey, hey, ho, ho, Miz and Morrison. Hey, hey, ho, ho. I, I would only accept that if it's done in anime. Uh yes, I think you could do it as a. Yeah, you, how about we do that? Considering the Hollywood nature of the one team, that is a backlot brawl. And in the course of this, you run into sets befitting to each of the teams. Oh okay. You run oh. into a a a, a Uso, Uso penitentiary. Penitentiary. You run into, uh, I don't know. It, live, living anime uh, for the new day, uh, you know. However, you want to play that, um, right? It's, um, it's uh, oh, where where did My Little Pony live? What? Where where is the place where My Little Pony lives? Uh, that... it's not it's not. Or you just do the Care Bears when they're on the the rainbow? Sure, sure Care Bears. Okay, if we if we want to go retro with it, yeah, Care Bear, the Care Bear Land. Yeah, care a lot. Yeah, care a lot. Exactly. Yeah, I know that. Equestria. That's it. That's Equestria. It. Oh. Equestria. That's Sorry. Cool. All I all I ever really watched was the My Little Pony movie back in the day. That's fair. Like but, way back in the day. Like I'm I'm talking more of like Twilight Sparkle and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, not the new ones. And then I didn't watch a whole lot of that one. But here, very good. I have met Brony Juggalos before. Oh god, Dave's Whoa. got the answer. <laughs> Those exist. All right. all right, so uh since I can't think of mine yet, Dave Podner in the chat room says Sasha versus Bianca in the mode of the Michael Jackson bad video. Mm, oh, wow. And I am a thousand percent here for that. Jeez. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do one past and one future. Mm-hmm. Um, my past one. The first time the Undertaker fought Kane. I feel like you could really. Okay. Okay. I, I feel like you could really amp that up. It takes Pete Rose out of the equation. <laughs> it does. It uh, takes Pete Rose out of the equation, sadly. Or does it? Less Pete Rose, more special effects. Or yeah. Pete Rose is a special effect. But yeah, like that, I would I would love to see that. Um, my future one. Oh, boy. I, I, I said I wanted to see Brock Lesnar for someone in like a gladiatorial combat thing. <laughs> but now I kind of want to see, um, uh, fuck. I can't think of his name now. I can't think of his fucking name. Oh no. Fuck that. Let's do, um, let's do the iconics versus, um, boss and hug connection. Mm-hmm. It's the style of an Australian sitcom. <laughs> I'm not even sure what that entails. Like, the Australian office? Is that what you're like? Yes. Okay. Wait, there's an Australian office? There is. It's the original office. What? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I want shot like those vignettes that Marvel did where Thor was living on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Before Ragnarok. Okay. So okay. basically, Taika Watiti directing the iconic. <laughs> That's what I want to see. All right. I think I have something fun. Okay. Uh, we could do the cinematic and the Firefly Funhouse, kind of a mixture. The Rock versus Bray Wyatt, Ooh. where where Bray Wyatt 
spoofs all of Rock's movies. Yeah. I'm talking the rundown. I'm talking <laughs> Tooth Fairy. Tooth Fairy. Yeah, Doom. Yeah. Dude, uh, all the crappy movies that he made before he made good ones. I'm talking when he was uh, the uh, the Scorpion King mm-hmm. in the in the no, second Joe. movie. Yeah, <laughs> never say no, Joe. Can, can can the Scorpion King also run into the other Scorpion Kings from the straight to video versions? Yes, and Brendan Fraser makes an, makes an appearance. Yes, because what's or, he doing? We're talking fat Brendan Fraser though. We're, we're... <laughs> He's in Zoom Patrol and he is lovely. Is he? Yes, he's fantastic in Doom Patrol. I need to watch it. Yes, yes, you do. Uh, but you know, this could be gold mm-hmm. when you think about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And uh, then he just makes fun oh, of all the crappy movies he made. Oh, what? Fuck it. I don't know why I was thinking. My future one: Undertaker vs. Sting. Mm-hmm. Do just, it. I want it someday. Uh, do it. And you know what? Have them each, like, have them fight each other over time. That's a fan. It, 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 I, I want I want purple glo- I want gray glove taker yeah. to meet Surfer Sting. You can just go ahead and do all of the matchups you've always wanted to do. Absolutely, yeah. just do it. Jeez, like, over the years, like I want Wolfpack Sting, Ministry Undertaker. Like we can do this entire lineage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Surfer mm-hmm. Sting versus American Badass Undertaker. Yes, and please, mm-hmm. yes. Oh Absolutely. God. So, that would be <clears throat> and the best thing is about the Boneyard match, Taker didn't take a single bump. No, that's the thing. He didn't take a single bump, and he looked amazing. I've seen yeah. articles about how this is just we could get ten more years out of Undertaker with matches like this. Oh, um, yeah. uh, Bob, Bobby F. J. Town saying Bray Wyatt versus Undertaker redo in a House of Horrors match. Only this time, good. Um, <laughs> so, so th- let's bring back to that. So, so yeah, you bring that up because you could do that with Sting. You could do that with with Taker. It was it was so interesting and and kind of a sidestep from that. W- watching the Edge thing. Um, spoiler alert. Um, he's talking about he's doing all the acting and he's doing all of the stunts. Mm-hmm. Like this guy had neck surgery and had to leave WWE, but he's still doing all the physical acting fighting like vikings had everybody starting to do their own their own physical stunts well, and everything right so because in haven he didn't do a lot of stunts mm-hmm. well it, it, get healthier yeah which led into well he never checked on the wrestling thing and then like he had a bike accident and that's when he's like hey wait a minute i feel okay and when checked and the ball got rolling right yeah um so so now like you know that was a way for him to kind of get around what happened to him sting also with i believe a neck injury if i'm not mistaken um so. can get around that and do something interesting as well so i this is a whole man i hope somebody's looking at this and seeing dollar signs uh at wwe right now like, uh, like you may not have gotten the dollar signs from this version of it too much because everything is crazy right now but like if you go back to like Texas or something like that, and you yeah. show something like this on that hundred foot screen. Yeah, the place is gonna go nuts. I I, I think yeah. you somebody's gonna go back and be like, you know, you know, everything was really weird. A lot of things didn't work. We tried a lot to make a lot work in this era. Mm-hmm. And you know what did work? That, everybody talked about that. Yeah, everybody or, talked about that. Imagine if we do like the boiler room brawl. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. P- Podner also calling up uh, Riddle versus Brock in a factory match, like a boiler room match, but a whole factory. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I think I think Lucha might have done something like that. If they don't start it out with um, Matt Riddle smoking a blunt <laughs> when uh, when he walks, he's like, bro, and then he just ashes it and throws it on the freaking ground. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, he doesn't throw it on the ground. He throws in like a giant smelting thing of molten metal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bobby also saying Gargano Champa in a Home Depot DIY match filled filed filed filmed, filmed, filmed as, a Home, as a Home Depot commercial. Okay, yeah. sure. It's a Home Depot commercial. What the fuck. <laughs> Well, I can you, see it. you better be careful because eventually, with as much as we hear about it on SmackDown, you're going to see uh, something with flow in somebody's corner. Um, oh, actually, I, I, now I roll back to it. I'm thinking about the Colonels for KFC. Oh, that was when, ridiculous. When they had the Battle Royal. So he was in the video game that year. <clears throat> was he really? Yeah. 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 Well, not, not to mention the uh, the um, the Good Brothers power getting power slammed through a bucket of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Good for them. Good for them. Um <laughs> 
By but, the way, has anyone checked on AJ and the Good Brother? Are they dead? <laughs> are Are they dead? Are they legit gone? I they, don't know. They were, not, they were not on Raw. No, well, then hardly <laughs> anybody was. So <laughs> there was a bunch of people that I've never seen before on Raw. Yeah. Uh, so with that, as we talk about theatrical, uh, one of the big things rolling out this week are two major releases from WWE collaborating with Netflix. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, of course, later in the week is, uh, what was it? The main event is the it, main it, event, the main event, uh, a kid becomes a wrestler and a lot yes. of our favorite stars look like they're in that. Starring band. Marco stunt. Well, our, <laughs> Turns out, <laughs> yeah, he did all the stunt work for that. But the other thing that is going on there is the Big Show show. Well, um, it's really average. <laughs> I did not expect much out of this, to be completely <laughs> honest. But um, uh, so you watched six episodes? Yeah, there are eight episodes. Yeah. Uh, it. it by the time I stopped, it was three in the morning. I'm like, I should go to bed. Oh wait, this episode called Prototype is John Cena in it? Uh, no. Oh, that's a disappointment. That is no, I no, but but you know who is in it? Uh, Mick Ur- Foley, I know. Urkel. Urkel is in it. Urkel is in the Big Show show. Fantastic. Urkel is his um is his doofy friend. And I, and I noticed that everything but the first one has big in the title. Yes. Uh, they, they, they call him show on the show. Wait, instead of dad, they call him show. Sometimes they say dad. Mm-hmm. Often it is just big show. So... It's, it's never Paul. <laughs> oh, like, oh, like well, it is never Paul related. Like his wife calls him show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Keep it a kayfabe on the show. She's, wow. His wife calls him show so i watched season two of happy last weekend two weekends ago that'd be so good i I love it i love it it's so great if it's if you've ever played max Payne, it's like max Payne with more acid uh really um (laughs) and and the big show is in season two Mm -hmm. oh i heard about that okay yeah yeah Yeah, that was a nice well i wouldn't say a nice surprise given the nature that he was in it but um (laughs) yeah yeah, you know, Bronny knows what I'm talking about. See, it was very funny. Yeah, it was. It, it was. was. It was actually perfect. Is it better or worse than Jericho as a clan leader? Oh, oh wow! Uh, for um, I mean, Jericho as a clan leader actually was pretty fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah. like, I mean, I mean, you have to be honest about that, right? Because yeah, when you, you have saw. To look at- Two different ways. Well, roll back, roll back, roll back. We're talking about Jane Silent Bob reboot. Spoiler alert. Uh, yeah, Chris Jericho is a clan leader. Yeah, he's a clan leader, and there's then you don't know about it, and then all of a sudden, Look at the racism. I I believe when the, the when it came out in theaters, you had just seen them pop up at AEW on one of the first couple episodes, right? Yeah. yeah. So you're just like, that's strange. Why are they hanging out at AEW? Okay, and then like you go and watch Jane Silent Bob because you're us, and you're just like. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> so, the yeah. Thing was, the theater I saw it in. No one knew who that was. Oh no 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 no. no my my one buddy was like, "Is that Chris Jericho?" <laughs> I'm like, yes. If anybody watched Jay and Silent, like Jay and Silent and Bob is that movie. It's like I watched comic book the movie, and I'm like, I don't know who the fuck any of these people are. Because they're all like comic book art writers and art and voice actors and artists. I'm like, I don't know who the fuck these people are. You know, <laughs> they're like super inside baseball for that. That's I feel bad for anybody that's never watched a Jay and Silent Bob movie and tries to go see this thing. So if you're a wrestling fan and have never seen Jay and Silent Bob, just don't. Just don't. It's not worth it just to see Jericho in it. it that movie was so meta. Oh, yeah. Uh, but in a good way, though. They just said, fuck it. <laughs> That's where that's where Kevin Smith is with his career in a fantastic way, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, I still follow fan of love what he's doing, um, but uh, I can't wait for Clerks Three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but no, look at look, so. Where? How did we get here? How did we care? So the Big Show Show. Big show. <laughs> yes. How, uh, how 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 would uh, how would you give it out of uh, a one out of six Marines? <laughs> All right. It, if you've if you've seen like Fuller House, yeah, it's along those lines. Fuller it's, House is fantastic. I, I, I will, 
Hmm. I can't hang with it. Okay, agree we, to this. We talked about this last uh, night. I I will say I enjoy the youngest child on the show. Okay. I think the youngest child saves a lot of the jokes. Okay. A lot of the jokes because they're written for someone that's twice her age. Mm -hmm. And like she she pulls them off very well. Is this the one that's bald and a mustache on this picture here? Well, is she the smallest one sort? Yeah, it looks like it's the one on his back. Yes. So yes. Yes, is the smallest child. Um it she's she's lovely. She's mm-hmm. a lovely little actress. Mm-hmm. So. And she saves a lot of the show. Everyone else in there, very generic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very generic. Like it's sweet, but the little the littlest kid saves a lot of the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, like you know we're all gonna give it. It is TVG, by the way. So Oh yeah, no, you're not gonna get anything. Well, and even the one later this weekend is this week. It's dropping Friday. I think it was all. It's all, it's gonna be a PG movie. It's not yeah. gonna be. I mean, it's a kids movie. That's what that's what they're aiming yeah, at. They're, they're, they're children's movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're children's episodes. We are shows. gonna advertise Modelo on WrestleMania, but we're gonna release kids content on Netflix. There you go. Hey, you know what? That's good shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Mike. Mike, can you give us an impression without breaking our ears of your reaction to Vince McMahon puppet yelling that's good shit? Hold on, hold on. Um <laughs> I'm going to give you a reenactment of the Firefly Funhouse. Okay. Oh wait, wait, were you wearing sunglasses at the time? No, but um uh, Macho Mercy was. <laughs> that's good shit, pal! This was essentially for those of you who didn't see the Firefly Funhouse match. This was the commentary team. Yeah, it was fantastic. Ruthless aggression. Him poking John and his boop, boop, boop. Do it, do it, or you're fired. I'm about ninety-five percent sure you actually voiced Vince McMahon for that puppet. I would have I would have gotten a much bigger WrestleMania payday if that was the point, if that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I point, of WrestleMania. I pointed this out last night. I have to point it out again. Bianca Belair and Montez Ford got dressed up and threw themselves a WrestleMania post party, mm-hmm. and it is delightful. <laughs> they are they are fantastic. They are relationship goals. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh boy. Well, and then note. And, and Bobby's saying that now we can actually do lethal leap year. <laughs> yes. That's all I wanted this year, but nobody did it. Hey, we got four. Hey, AEW could have. We did a the two PW did a show on the on Leap Day. So did AEW. Mm-hmm. They didn't even call it Lethal Leap Year. Like. No, they called it once in a leap year. The rest of us called it Lethal Leap Year. <laughs> I was like, see you guys tomorrow at Lethal Leap Year. Oh, well, I've been bugging them for a while. But, but Marshall wins. He's scary. Uh, yeah. So. You couldn't All tell right. him to move it? What's that? Couldn't tell him to move it? Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, overall, um, you're not going anywhere this weekend. Watch the big show show. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it, it, it's it's it's, it's, it's a it's an, big show. He's trying really hard. It's an easy I, I four hard. hours of your life, according yeah, to these times. I, I give I give big show credit. He is trying really hard, mm-hmm. and he's yeah. good at comedy. He is. He is good at comedy. I I and I I fear because. I take a little bit of issue with Floor House. It, it it was kind of like, oh, cool. It's like I remember it a little bit, and then just like, I can't roll with this. The um, thing after I a while, from, the only th- the only things I took away from Floor House is that Stephanie Tanner is still pretty hot. God damn right. And uh, so is her her angsty friend Gia, who tried to make her smoke in the original series. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks she pops up. Is she still troubled? She yes. is still troubled. Yes, her, she is still troubled, and she is still hot. Her daughter is also troubled. <laughs> I didn't get that far into it. I didn't get that far into it. It's okay. They're wrapping it up. They're doing one more season, and that's it. Wow. Well, I think the one is not able to. Didn't she get some jail time or something? Yeah. Oh, uh, 
the older the older sister. No, uh, oh, and, Be- and, and Becky is in jail. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, and Becky's in trouble. Oh, okay. Fraud. Yeah. And embezzlement. All that Fraudy. good. All that good stuff. Fraudy. Yeah. Well, guys, other than embezzlement, what what did you learn from wrestling this week? Jesus. Oh, man, what did I learn from wrestling this week? Fuck, there was there was a lot to the, there was a lot to absorb. I learned that. Oh, actually, good. Before we can, we just do a quick poll. Okay. Should WrestleMania be two nights from now on? No. Oh no. No. Okay. Okay. I want to make sure we are all in agree because I see a lot of people online saying yes, and I'm like, you guys, if if they split it up into two nights. You know it ain't gonna be two three hour shows. No, mm-hmm. it's gonna be like two six hour shows. It's gonna be two six hour shows. Exactly, exactly. My fault. and it's gonna cost an arm and a leg even more so to get to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to make sure. If, if WWE all- thinks that they can sell out that stadium two nights over the weekend and make that much more money, they're dreaming. They will. If they no, think I- they can, they will. I think they would have to set. It- sell it as a two night package ticket. Mm-hmm. They would have to still do still gonna be but more. That, That's still that, two that days has, of merch, two days of uh concessions. That, that it's has, like have you seen those concerts where they give you those wristbands and they put the um they put like a chip in there? That's what they can do. Like well, they, you'd have to treat it like Comic Con. Yeah. You'd have to treat it like Comic Con. Like if they if they treated WrestleMania weekend as like a Comic Con thing and they give you a lanyard, like, hey, this is my weekend pass. I can go to I hear, hear my ticket for NX for takeover scan down here. My tickets for Mania is on here. Like access, access. That's one thing. Mm-hmm. That's, that's actually part, not a bad idea. That's a, that's a great idea. They will never do that in a million years no. because I think they would take a bath on that financially, setting all that up. I yeah. think I, I I got two for guys. I think the overall uh, we learned that WWE will knock. Have has it in them to knock something out of the park when pressured. Mm-hmm. We're not mm-hmm. seeing it in competition. We saw it in circumstances, and they did something that I think most of us consider. Well, this is worth them doing this. I think. I think they also need to let the talent take the reins a little more. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. those two matches, in particular, the ones that we're talking about, mm-hmm. definitely didn't have a certain somebody's influence on them. He mm-hmm. probably didn't even know they were happening. Mm-hmm. And the other one was that WWE sent Edge a ring. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said, "Nary, just like he's got a, 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 an authentic WWE and they, ring." And in they his... sent him a dash. And they what? They sent him a dash. A dash. Oh a dash. yeah. No, they didn't. No, yeah. The, the... Okay, when they get to the part where you're like, "Oh, Edge and Dash Wilder have had like a relationship all these years." Yeah, I'm just like. This is like Edge's Ed, Edge is like has the perfect life as a wrestler. <laughs> it's just like I, I don't like, think he even needed to qualify as a wrestler. I, he just like he he started talking to Beth the night of his for uh, uh appreciation night and and obviously good things happened from that mm-hmm. um into he just like I'm going to try this acting thing and did what do they say 96 episodes of television and three movies in this time? Yep. That's 99. Insane. 99 one away from syndication. 99. Edge one is almost syndicated. Syndication. You just need to throw out some of those Edge and Christian um and then to roll back and it was like, "Oh, my neck works." <laughs> the fuck? Like I I love that that documentary was originally how he was moving on from wrestling. Yeah. Turned into a comeback story. Yeah. Like that's legit movie shit. Yeah. That is legit movie shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like that's not even a joke. That's something you. That's something the, like Disney would put on. Like have it streamed to Disney Plus immediately. The, he's gonna have. He's gonna have a uh, fighting with my family style movie eventually. He has. Oh, to. he will. He has he to. Will. I think we just saw it. Um. But it like, gets into the parts about like, yeah, it turns out D- Dash Wilder was like a, a personal trainer that worked at his gym. They've been bullshitting this whole time. And Edge found out on his own that Dash was a wrestler. 
<laughs> and the night of the appreciation show. I know I'm spoiling a lot of this documentary, but it's so amazing. And it's the end of the show. Oh, so but anyway, it's great. Uh, at the end, I, I, at the night of his appreciation night, he's handing a DVD of Dash Wilder's match to somebody important, uh, John Laurinaitis, I think, to try to get him a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, and, and 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 then the parts where like Dash comes in, and even like the earlier parts where it's just like him and Beth working out in the ring, I'm just like, wow, wow. Yeah, like that's amazing. That's like, you know, like, you're talking about relationship goals. Holy shit! Yeah, like, <laughs> that that was that was mind blowing to me. That I'm like, oh my god, they trained together. How mm-hmm. cute mm-hmm. That. And it's like Beth was working to a comeback too. So it's legit movie shit. And they didn't even touch on the fact that Beth like also wrestled at Royal Rumble. <laughs> no, they didn't touch it. They they didn't touch it at all. And I'm like, Jesus, like mm-hmm. these two and they're still stand up parents and Beth is still doing full time commentary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. I, I my I learned if WWE tomorrow for my birthday episode of NXT with a ladder match and the blow off between Gargano and Ciampa, if they put Sam fucking Roberts on that show, oh fuck! On commentary, I am, I am not watching it. That's that was the one thing that kept I'm me not watching it. Like I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm going to celebrate my birthday later. Later that day, I'm going to turn on NXT. If I hear Tom Phillips and Sam Roberts, I am turning it off. Yep. <laughs> Not worry. Don't do that to us because it's a protest. Mm. I, I'm scared Mm-mm. because Sam Roberts was on last week, and he was terrible my last week. God, it was the worst. Like, give me Jr. King. And JBL on commentary. <laughs> oh, for, the unholy trinity for, for you. Hours. Give me that as opposed to Sam Roberts for one hour. That's a lot, man. <laughs> yeah. And oh God. Sam, Sam Roberts just he needs to have his mouth sewn shut. <laughs> From the chat room, Bobby UFJ Town learned that Taker can go for an R5 Mania so they film all of his matches this way. He also learned that Randy Orton was in a match that I actually liked that went very long. Uh, though, and I was going to say, well, it's all one sentence. I was going to say that SmackDown fist relaxed and retired as a chair <laughs> at the performance center, but then I saw the fist in the Firefly Funhouse match and realized that that was just the second generation superstar debut. <laughs> were we just joking? Ronnie, were you there when we were just joking, or was that Thursday night when we talked about the SmackDown fist needs to be in the new Rise Arena? Yeah, I was in that conversation. Yes, yes. Well, they were originally supposed to use the fist for the return on Fox. Uh, that's just a. That, I, was, that, was, that was in the discussions. I'm bringing it back, but it's not going to be a fist at Rise. It's going to be a giant fucking eagle. <laughs> that's, not, that's not to do with a hand at all. No, no, it isn't. What do you? Or, or we could just bring the fist back. I don't, you know, like, why don't you just do a middle finger? Because then, still, then it's still a bird. No, that's I mean, a, that's for another promotion. <laughs> so give me ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh do 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 uh partner did I say partner learns that learn that uh, uh do different do different if they want to. Oh, this is I when <laughs> when Undertaker said what's my wife's name, I said in my head, Susan <laughs> <laughs> wrong, wrong, wife. wrong wife. Wrong wife. And I was hoping oh, AJ did no, too. And, oh, Sarah. 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 Sorry, it's Susan in the chat room. It is um, Renee Young's name in Lethal Leap. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. But no, Sa- yeah, Sarah. Sarah's actually what was in my head at the time. But yeah. Yeah, I know the Laura. <laughs> By the way, uh, Sorg, we, we were talking about before the show. Dave says you need to not watch all the movies because they cut out a lot of the lore. Oh, yeah. No, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. Okay. So you okay. To- there I go. You guys learned everything? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, Good job. Hey, guys. Good job, Mayheming. Good job. <laughs> good job. Great good success. Success. We'll be back here next week talking about mayhem things. Of Whatever some happens. Sort. Whatever happens. Whatever Who happens. knows? There's a big... And the paper boy. Even MTV. 
Look, guys, this show is essential. We'll be here every week. That's right. Every, That's everywhere right. you look, everywhere, there's a pod. There's a pod. <laughs> a voice to hold on to. What, what kind of pod are we talking about? Everywhere like a, uh... you... I'm doing the Full House theme song, God damn it! Oh, okay. Uh, Let me have my gimmick. Take it. Ah, Ronnie, this is why we should have fired you before you started. That makes sense. Right. Now, I can't, now I can't even finish it anymore. I ruined it. I can't even finish the pod Soiled it. I had Soiled a whole thing. It. I had a whole thing going. Soiled it. Was gonna, it. it was gonna be how we signed off the show. It was gonna it was gonna tie it all together, like like a nice little rug that that Mr. Lebowski has. It's a nice. It's gonna be a whole thing, and Ronnie just ruined it. Bleed, 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 bleed. That's all, folks. Well, anyways, we do have a lot going on again. Uh, <laughs> Wednesday at five p.m. Eastern, we'll be talking with Magnum CK uh, about his upcoming Magnum Opus documentary, which is releasing on YouTube and Amazon Thursday. And I know I have some time carved out so I can try to watch that as well. Uh, Thursday, uh, Ma- Main Street Matt will be conducting Listen to Your Parents. Um, I believe our friend uh, sh- uh, from Should I Drink That and Yin's Love Barbecue, Doug Durda, will be a part of that. Uh, we also have Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on Get Jagoff's uh, Facebook page. We'll have another music and comedy night there that we'll be live streaming. Um, conducted here uh, via the studio. Obviously, nobody in the studio due to circum- current circumstances. Uh, they We will also be doing Friday night. We will be doing an IndieWrestling.us game night. I believe we do have uh, the successful St. Jordan Styles showing us how successful he is at Rocket League. Mike, I think you were interested in joining with us with that. Our friend Damien, the photographer, uh, uh, does some great work, and we'll see how great he is at Rocket League as well. So we at least have uh, four of us, I think, in a game. So and that will be live streaming as well. Well, we'll see if I can play and conduct the live stream at the same time. I don't, I don't know entirely how spectating works in Rocket League. So we'll, 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 we'll all learn together. Um, <laughs> and I'm not good at Rocket League at all. But uh, Saturday, uh, very, something very special. We are pointing out the next two Saturdays that we're going to be um, um, supporting our friends who do not have the wrestling shows this month, uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling, we are doing a watch-along night. We're going to be watching some Prospect Pro Wrestling um, matches. We will have um, the owner of Prospect Pro Wrestling, Marshall Gambino, on the show scheduled, and we will have um, at least a, a, a few of the roster members on to watch back some of the, uh, uh, the 2PW matches uh, from their history and uh, with some live commentary along with us. So please, well, if you'll join us, I'm hoping a lot of the fans of Prospect Pro Wrestling also join us there. That will be from their Facebook page and probably simulcast on the IndieWrestling.us one. So please go follow Prospect Pro Wrestling. The Saturday after that, we also just announced there will be a special live presentation for Renegade Wrestling Alliance um, where there's going to be um, some interviews, catch-in, check-ins with um, um, a lot of the guys that were involved with a lot of interesting interesting stories uh going on over there at rwa so um again that'll be over at their facebook page so please follow the renegade wrestling alliance so um you got some stuff to check out (laughs) and i hope you guys join us for that uh as well and thank you everybody as a part of all of this mad mike 483 on the twitter to be t-u-b-i dot tv search for lucha underground Mm mm-hmm because I said it last night, I'm going to say it again until the cows come home. If you like the Boneyard match, if you like the Firefly Funhouse, that is all of Lucha Underground. And, and, we've, also, love it. and we've also clipped this plug out on Instagram and Twitter so you can send it to your friends that need to hear this message. Yes, please, for the love of God. Like, Lucha Underground, like, we're never going to get another season of it. No. Just because the stars don't align that way, sadly. So we'll never see Bad News Bear as the ultimate mega boss that he should have been. But just a spoiler alert for the last episode of Lucha Underground, where my, where my name and Matt Carlin's name is mentioned. <laughs> but spoiler alert, watch it anyway. Like, it's so great. And, of course, Roddy Starks, star of uh, Stage Screen Wrestling Ring and Podcast. Uh, yeah. I'm on the Twitter, the Facebook, the Instagram, the stuff. And you have a show. And I have a show, yes. I have a show. We talk about toys. It is Tyler and Ronnie's Most Excellent Toy Adventures. Or Klein and Stark's Most Excellent Toy, toy Adventure. Yeah, that too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I and I believe a second edition of that is in the works. Yes, it is. We have to do that very soon. Yes. That's the game plan. 
So we'll be touching base on that. Uh, yeah. So much uh, going on. Please go check out all the great podcasts at SorgatronMedia.com. I think we're releasing about 10 a week on average of new content for you. So please, if you need time to fill in, we got a lot for you. Uh, so we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.